Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Good Old Fashioned Wrestling Podcast. My name is Rick Reinhardt. I'm here with Alan Fenstermaker, and today we are going to be rating AEW superstars. We're trying to get the narrative out about what's going on in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, we're here to help you help yourself. Okay, we got a list here of uh, the AEW roster. We're going to be going through the roster one AEW star at a time. And i um, just going to gonna let you guys know what we think about these uh, AEW uh, superstars. We're going to start off with good old JR, Jim Ross. Man, I still remember uh, Jim Ross uh, calling WrestleMania 15, Stone Cold versus The Rock. Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. And then, <clears throat> dude, Stone, yeah, Jim Ross has got to be like, one of my favorite uh, commentators of all time, like uh, just hearing him call some some epic matches in um in WWE WWF. And uh, what do you got to say about Jim Ross? I was at that WrestleMania 15, man. That was a crazy crazy show. Um, at the height of all this wrestling stuff too. Um, but nah, I remember Jim Ross in the WCW days back in the day. I always thought he was a great commentator. Like there, there there's not many guys out there that you could say like have embodied their role uh, or their job. And I'd say Jim Ross truly is, you know, uh, one of the greatest pro wrestling commentators of all time, without a doubt. But also just his uh, approach with all this stuff and how he just calls it right down the middle. I, I don't know, man. I mean, he's he's definitely one of the best, you know. Yeah, man. And uh, also we got guys like uh... – we got, we got We got to rate them. Oh. So if I was to rate Jim Ross, I, I would say like this. Jim Ross on on this AEW run, because, you know, Jim Ross in the past, I'd give him a 10 at everything, you know, probably his whole career, to be honest. Um, and then I'd say in this AEW run, because he has now embodied the, 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 the role of a real veteran, I mean, you know, a real diehard when it comes to this stuff, I, I would give him a 10 for it. Definitely, I would give J good old JR a 10 too, a 10 plus plus plus. But uh, yeah, the next guy we're getting to is uh, Tony Schiavone. Now, Tony Schiavone is another amazing uh, asset to uh, AEW. What do you, you got to say, Rick? I've always liked Tony Schiavone. Um, he was one of my favorites back in the day with NWA and WCW. I always liked his flair. This, see, this is the hard part with commentators is, is commentators – like, are some of the best. I mean, you look at Gorilla Monsoon, you look at Bobby Heenan, um, you look at Jesse Ventura, you know, you'd have to put Tony Schiavone in that ballpark. I mean, you know, we were talking about this the other day, we were talking about hip-hop, you know, some of these guys are the greatest to ever do it when it comes to hip-hop, so it's like that with commentating. I would say that Tony Schiavone, for this AEW run, because we have missed Tony Schiavone and WCW product very much, I would give Tony Schiavone a nine. Wow, that's a very good one. I'd give Tony. I'd probably give him about like an eight or a nine myself with Tony Schiavone because uh, because of who he is. But um, but uh, next up it would be Excalibur. What do you think about him? Excalibur has been catching a lot of shit from the Cornette uh, cult over uh, in YouTube land. And I, I got to say, like, with, with, with these with these guys running the third string, it's like, you know, I liked um, Scott Hudson. You know, I was a fan of, you know, Lee Marshall, or I was a fan of, uh, what's his name, Mike Tanay. But, you know, with Excalibur, I would say he falls short of those guys very much. I would give him, I, would, I, I to be generous, I'll give him a three. Yeah, that's fair. Excalibur, I'd probably say like maybe like a a two or a three uh, tops because he was yeah he hasn't really he's like he's he caught a lot of heat. But then like my next my, guys, my my personal favorite Taz, I would give him this guy a ten. Is Taz like I know like I watched him in WCW, no not WCW, WWF, WWE, ECW, and uh, Taz definitely could bring it as a commentator. And as a wrestler, and um, I know, like I seen Taz as a uh, as an instructor on Tough Enough, and yeah, Taz is hardcore to the extreme back from the ECW days. How do you think, Rick? 
Taz in ECW was a force to be reckoned with. He got injured when he got to the WWE, and he got his dream by you know coming out at uh, Madison Square Garden. So uh, Taz's career is almost backwards, but I guess in, in in you know in the high contact world of professional wrestling, it, it's like that. It's a young man's game when it comes to being in the ring. So Taz has been able to make a career out of what he's doing, and I'd say he's been a pretty good asset to AEW because. Some of these guys can't talk, but when you get Taz up there, you know, you, you, you believe that he's ready to, you know, clobber somebody's fucking head off or something like that. So I would give Taz a seven on his AEW okay. run. Hey, that's cool. All right, next up would be Colt Cabana. What do you think about Colt Cabana? I'm going to be honest, all right, with some of these guys, um, I'm actually not that familiar with their work. I may have seen one or two matches. Cole Cabana, I would say, falls into that category, so it's not really fair for me to give him a rating. All right, fair enough. And uh, what then about you? Colt Cabana, I don't really know him that well myself either. Yeah. But um, next one will be like when when we think AEW, you can't uh, not talk about this guy, Cody Rhodes. Now Cody Rhodes has really stepped it up in a lot of ways with uh, AEW. In fact, he's a face of AEW. So I'd probably say I'd give him a ten because. Like, all he's doing and all he's done with AEW? What do you think? Yeah, I, I'd have to give him a 10 one because I think everybody's really proud of him. I'd also say because we've needed this competition, uh, you know, or, or not even competition, just this this different lane and different flavor of pro wrestling. Um, we, we've really needed this. So, I mean, I, I, I would give him a 20 for that just to have the balls to do this. And to go all the way with it, with you know, like Ted Turner and all these people, um, yeah, I I give him a ten plus. Cool. Now, next up will be another name with uh, AEW, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, I would probably give him about a ten also too, because you can't like uh, talk about AEW and not mention the name uh, Kenny Omega. Like him and Cody Rhodes are definitely up there with it. What do you think? Well, go ahead. So yeah, so Cordette would, would say something along the lines that Kenny Omega has defiled the wrestling business by doing stupid matches and, and outlaw shit and having sex or having a match with a sex doll or something like that. So that we'll put it like this. That's his uh his 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 rap sheet. Alright, so what I'm trying to say, um, we had a little technical difficulties, but I think we're good now. Um, Cornette would say about Kenny Omega that Kenny Omega has defiled the wrestling business in the past by doing outlaw stuff and by doing uh, a match with a sex doll or something like that. So there's definitely a little bit of a, he's got a defiling vibe. I haven't seen it that much with AEW, so I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt in this situation and give him a clean rating. Uh, I know Cornette hates the man, but Cornette, we're still riding with you, homie, all right? Uh, I would give Kenny Omega, because of his in-ring work alone and the fact that he was able to be a heel champion, I would give him about a six. Hmm. That's fair enough, man. But uh, what, what would you say about Chris Jericho? I know, like, Chris Jericho, I followed his run in WCW, Followed his run in uh, WWE, WWF, and um, yeah, him starting the inner circle with uh, AEW as well. And uh, what do you have to say about Mr. Jericho? Man, this is a this is a tough one for me because I I'm a Jericho fan from way back. Uh, I always liked his work in WCW, and you know, I watched the Thrill Seekers later on. You know, as you go back and you watch the older stuff, you know what I mean. Uh, and Smoky Mountain, and they were good, man. You know, Jericho. I saw Jericho get over, and I want to say it was either '97 or '98, but he got over really hard with the fans. And I remember him not getting the push he deserved in WCW. Then I remember him going over to WWF with much anticipation, and having like the big old entrance, the Y2 Y2J thing. And I was happy that he became a world champion over there. I was really happy for him, but. It just seems like in this modern day that he has he's done good with AEW. He he's been a um, a legitimate 
name to be in the main event. But it also seems like with some of the stuff he's got going on outside of the ring and some of his um, wild swinging in the political realm that it just seems like Jericho has turned into somewhat of a bitter old wrestler. So, so I, I, I would give Jericho in that case, I would give him about a six. Hmm. Yeah, and no, I could see that. You know, like Jericho, like is de- done a somewhat quite of a uh, downfall in uh, in AEW, but then also we all have other guys like um, CM Punk. What do you think about him? So far, just from the crowd response alone and his entrances and everything, I would give CM Punk a 10. Um, I haven't seen much of his work inside the ring since he's been back. I've seen some of it, but, um, you know, just his overall, just overall the way they utilized him and everything, I give him a 10. Yeah, I'd probably give him about the same, too, because CM Punk, like, dude, he's a, this guy's a controversial guy. Like, I know, like, in some of the stuff he did in uh, WWE and all, and, like, um, UFC and it was kind of cool. We even got to meet CM Punk too over at the ECW arena in Class Philly. Action. That was dude. He's a he's a great guy. So I have nothing but respect. I'd definitely give him a ten. But um, next up we got Adam Page. The Hagman Adam Page, man. Uh, I love the gimmick. I don't know if he's the right guy for the gimmick, but it's a good gimmick to say the least. Um, they gave him the belt a little early. You know, he's a little guy, right? Like, how big is he? Hmm. Who is that? Uh, we're talking about Adam Page. Yeah. Let's see how tall he is. Let's see, let's Google real quick for that yeah, one. Yeah, let's get to the bottom of this, man. You know, just, just, just in general. Because it, it's like... Here, pause it. Here, I'll talk about it. it it's, it's good to get to, to the size, you know, the size of these individuals because... You know, we're seeing guys in the main event that are not as big as they used to be. And I'm just curious, because even with a gimmick like that, like Hangman Adam Page, like, you would almost think of, like, somebody like a Stan Hansen, like, you know, somebody that's big, meaty, and fucking ready to kick some ass. But with Hangman Adam Page, it seems like they gave him this gimmick, and it's working. But I think like, I, it's like I don't understand why it's working, or I don't really, like, believe it or something. I don't know. Let's see, Adam Page right here I w- says here he's six foot tall. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. It's like he's a point guard or something like that as, as far as size. Um, I give Adam Page just because I, I, I like I like him, man. I, I don't know why. I, I, there's something about him that I like. I give him a six and a half. Yeah, okay. Now, like the next one I'm going to mention is Orange Cassidy. What would you say about Orange Cassidy? All right, so I know Cornette doesn't like his shit either. He thinks it's bad for the business, but I would say this. Um, with Orange Cassidy, out of everybody that I've seen, that's pretty new, you know. Maybe maybe besides Britt Baker, I would say Orange Cassidy's got something. I'm going to give Orange Cassidy a 7. Ooh, yeah, I know. Like, I met him the one time over at – um. Over at over at the ECW arena, and when I interviewed. yeah, and I, I interviewed him, and uh, it's got a lot of hits. He got a lot of people calling him freshly f- freshly squeezed. Up to it's up to like five thousand views already, and um, yeah, at, it, Orange Cassidy, uh, like he's a man of few words, but he's he's definitely going places. So next up, what would you rate him? I'd probably rate him like about maybe like about a seven. Yeah. Yep. So next up, we got Sammy Govera. Ooh. All right, now th- th- this is another interesting one because <laughs> I keep talking about Cornette because Cornette's the one that's actually saying the most right now out of everybody. But he likes Sammy Guerrero, Guevara, and you know he he said the kid's got something, and and it's like once he says that, it's like that gives the assurance for me to be like, yeah, like you know what, I kind of like this dude too. So I'm gonna give Sammy Guevara. Uh, I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him a seven. Okay. Now, like the next one, um, let's see, Sammy Guevara, I'd give him probably like about a six. And then you got the Jurassic Express. What would you say about them? All right. So first off, who's in the Jurassic Express one time? Hmm. 
Jurassic Express. Look that up for me. Yeah, just looking up. And, and this is what we're talking about with some of these new guys. It's hard to remember exactly what they're doing. Like I could see the Jurassic Express it's, uh, in my head. Luchasaurus. Yeah. And uh, the Jungle Boy. I'm really glad I asked about this. All right, so Luchasaurus, I've seen him steal the show at certain AEW shows on TV. So I, I'm gonna rate these guys individually instead of as a tag team. I'm gonna give Luchasaurus an eight from what I've seen. As, as in potential, you know, not necessarily that he's an eight, like he's, you know, he deserves to be in the main event right now, but he's good, man. He's one of the new good guys to, to watch out for. Jungle Boy, he's gotten a lot of, you know, airtime. He's, he, he, he's, he's a memorable looking guy, but uh, I just don't know if he's going to cut it in AEW. I'll give him a four. Okay, now... Back after some technical difficulties, and uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure where we left it. Like, how, how would you rate Luchasaurus or Jungle? Familiar with them, but um, yeah, like the, any of the Luchadors, they are definitely like uh, big in the high flying maneuvers, and uh, I'm a, definitely a fan of the Luchador style. So I'd probably give them about like uh, I don't really know them, but if their style, yeah, if their style is anything like um. If the style is anything like any of the other luchadors, I'd probably say like about maybe like uh, eight. One wrestler that I know is an AEW that is definitely going places. He's Brian Pillman Jr. And uh, Brian Pillman Jr. has been making a lot of waves in wrestling. And in fact, he was the Pro Wrestling Archives uh, Wrestler of the Year. In the same year, he was a Pro Wrestling Illustrator, Illustrated Wrestler of the Year. I give Brian Pillman oh, Jr. Yeah. A 10, hands down. Yeah, so he was the Pro Wrestling Archives Wrestler of the Year, then the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year. And I think he won that twice, two years in a row, which is kind of funny. Um, all right, so this is what I'll say about Pillman Jr. in AEW so far. I've seen that when they give him the mic, he is willing to cut some good promos. I mean, he's, he's, he's willing to really talk about his life, you know what I mean? And, and that's a beautiful thing. So... I would say he's got the look, he's got the promo, his in-ring work is still getting better, but he, he's, he's got something, so if they utilize him right, I see, I would give him in AEW so far, I would give him a 7, but with the potential to be a 10 if the company knows how to utilize him right. Yeah, no doubt. But uh, honestly, I think Pillman Jr. should do the loose cannon gimmick. And uh, I think that's how he would get over. Because he's talking about a lot about um, paying re homage to his pops and all lately. And I think that would be awesome to see him do that, do the uh, loose cannon gimmick. You know, at this point, I'm trying to figure out what I would do if I was booking AEW. And I had Brian Pillman Jr. on the, on the card. Um... I would probably make him into like a heartthrob main eventer. If, like if I was Tony Khan, I would probably do that. I I I'd let him not not go heartbreak kid, but but you know Pillman Junior's own version of what he thinks it could be because he just has the look on some whole other level shit than anybody else I've seen in AEW. Um, real quick before we go, um, is is there anybody else you want to mention? I John Moxley, somebody I wanted to mention right now. Sure. Um, if I had to rate John Moxley, and I know he's he's like getting all this crazy TV time and whatever, I'm giving John Moxley a one. Yeah, I know. Like John Moxley's taking a lot of heat. I know. Like I kind of I kind of like his style <clears throat> in AEW a lot better than WWE as uh, Dean Ambrose. I'd probably say he'd be more like a six, but um, yeah, mainly because he does have the intensity to do it, and he could definitely bring it, but um. All right, so I guess this is all we got for the, tonight. So, uh, Rick, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, I, I, I'm thinking about Britt Baker right now, and I'm just giving her a 10 because she's good. Definitely to give her a 10, especially her match with Thunder Rosa, also another 10 uh. that I would have to say because uh, they put together one hell of a mat hardcore match uh, that you never see anymore in wrestling, it seems. Chris Statlander, if you're out there, and uh... – you want to, you know, um, <laughs> nah, I'll give you a 10, all right? <laughs> cool, man. So I guess that's about it. What do you, you have anything else you'd like to say? Um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that like we have to talk about. Like if we're doing this rating system, um, well, we got to talk about MJF because mm-hmm. we didn't talk about him. And I thought about like you know the inner circle we should mention too. The inner circle, I'm gonna go off and just give him like a three. I thought it was like a little lackluster. What do you think? Hmm. I'd probably say about the same, like about a three, because the inner circle. Um, I know like AEW, like there are a lot of groups. So there's not a and really any single breakout stars. That's what I think AEW needs is some single breakout stars. And now we're here to MJF. I'm gonna give MJF an eight with the potential to be a ten. Yeah, I'd probably give him about like a nine, but um. I know, like, he definitely can, I could see a lot of potential in him, and uh, I know a lot of people compare him to The Miz. I think MJF is better than way The Miz, better. way better than The way Miz. Better. The Miz sucks. Yeah, The Miz, yeah, The Miz sucks. And this will bring us to another future episode where we rate the WWE guys, but yes, The Miz, we feel here at the Pro Wrestling Archives, kind of sucks. Yep, and that's all we got for tonight. Good night.